Hello and welcome to Analog Insights. In today's episode, I review the Eurola XF35, which was kindly sent to us by a viewer from Australia, including some prints that show the impressive quality of the lens that it comes with. The Eurola XF35 is a simple, compact 35mm rangefinder camera that comes with a fantastic 40mm f2.3 sonar lens that Rolla had licensed from card size and um, therefore was allowed to um, build it. The camera was built between 1974 and 1980 and was designed primarily for amateurs um, and it had no manual settings, basically only an automatic mode. And yet, um, because of that impressive lens that it comes with, it really creates solid images if you um, yeah, take a little bit care of how you uh, use the camera, you really get some nice results out of it. And that is impressive for the kind of camera that it is, that it's just meant to be thrown into your bag and um, carried around like that for city trips and so on. Allegedly around um, 207,500 units were built and interestingly most of them were built in black um, um, and only around 46,500 units in chrome. So you see many camera models where it's the other way around where the chrome ones are the more common ones and the black ones are the heavily sought after ones. In this case, um, you have more black ones and um, at least to my eyes, um, it is a really, really nice um, version of the camera um, that immediately gives it a pretty stealthy look and I also like this beautiful typography here on the front. And while this camera is less famous than the more compact and manual Rolle 35, which we had reviewed here before, it is still worth taking a look in my opinion. And at the time, these 35 millimeter compact cameras were of course all the rage in the 1970s and also late 1960s. And what is interesting is that while Rolle decided to license the lens from card size, it opted against using the famous Konica C35 um, platform, rangefinder platform, that many other manufacturers used in order to tap into that market. So for instance, of course, the Konica um, Auto S3 um, was based on that um, platform, but also the Minolta Hymatic um, S7S2 and also the Revue um, 400SE and many other camera models all used the very same Konica C35 platform. And Rolli decided against using that and instead um, created its own more complicated camera design with an ingenious rangefinder um, system without any moving mirrors. I took the camera with me on a city trip to New York in December, um, shooting some typical reportage films like Ilford FP4, Kodak Tri-X and also some Kodak Portra 400. And of course, I can't wait to share the results with you and discuss this camera. <music> design and features. The camera design is sleek and beautiful. You have this elegant white typography on the black background on the front. Looking at the camera from the top, you only have a shutter release button, frame counter, hot shoe and the film rewind lever. The back is clean except for the viewfinder and looking through it you get a bright clear view onto your subject, a rangefinder patch in the center and on the right side an indication of the automatically selected shutter speed and aperture based on the available light. The only thing that you don't have is um, automatic parallax compensation. 
The bottom features a tripod socket, a film release button and the battery compartment and of course the camera originally took um, PX625 Mercury batteries which are not available anymore and you can either use wine cells as I did in my case which I can also highly recommend or a um, 1.5 silver oxide um, battery with an adapter to bring down the voltage to the needed value which is 1.35 uh, volt. On the front of the camera is the core element of the camera as you could say um, the 40 millimeter sonar lens that comes in um, five elements in four groups with multi-coding and an unusual maximum aperture of f2.3 the lens design is licensed by Rolai from Carl Zeiss Oberkochen and uh, the lens really lives up to its reputation as we will see in a minute and offers a um, few controls that are primarily um, directed at people using the camera with a flash. Um, so if you're not using a flash you basically leave it um, on the setting here and then you're, you're good to go. Um, the only thing that you would typically do is set the ISO in the beginning um, using this small dial here um, between um, 25 and 400 um, is the range and that was then set the light meter sensitivity and what is convenient is that it's, the light meter is placed within the inner ring so once you screw um, a filter on top of it on the um, filter size of um, 46 millimeters by the way um, the filters are automatically taken into consideration and of course this filter size is also um, pretty convenient and there are a lot of great filters for this size available and out there. The minimum focusing distance of the camera is one meter and because of that it is not well suited for close-ups in my opinion um, but thank Thanks to the relatively short focusing throw and the excellent rangefinder patch, it is great for quick focusing in a street shot situation. And I think this is where the, the whole camera really shines to take some really nice and quick street shots. Um, the built-in leaf shutter offers speeds between 1 um, 650s of a second and 1 30s of a second as well as a bulb mode. And looking through the viewfinder you will notice um, a specialty which is a hint at the construction. There are basically no separate options for aperture and shutter speed, instead they are always tied together and, if, and you can see that here on the right side. So it basically means you get the maximum aperture of f2.3 at um, 1 30s of a second and an f16 at typically 1 650s of a second. Um, and there is no way to change that or manipulate that. The only thing available is um, basically the ISO dial and you can do some exposure compensation if you want using manipulating the light meter sensitivity, but that's basically it. Um, the Rolle XF35 also supports flash, as I briefly mentioned, as long as your flash has a middle contact. And um, I haven't really tried it, to be honest, um, but I can certainly see that it would work with it as well. And please also note if a lot of these features sound familiar to you and also the look of the camera um, looks familiar, that the Folklander VF135 is basically identical to this camera here. Um, so if you're surprised or notice some similarities, this is why. Um, so the Rolai XF35 is basically identical. So what about the optical performance of this lens and the results that I got out of this camera? In my opinion, the camera creates excellent sharp images with a lot of detail and beautiful colors. Um, I, of course, it was an experiment to just take this camera as my primary camera to capture New York City during the trip. 
but I'm really happy with the results, especially the black and white ones. I feel like the Kodak Portra could have used a bit more light. So it was either the light meter sensitivity that is not perfectly accurate anymore, or I should just have set the, the ISO dial to at least um, ISO 320 or even ISO 200 to get some better results, especially on such a cloudy day. It would have been wise to do that, I think. And you can see it in some images that they have a little bit of grain and that the um, unnecessarily, so to speak, and that the um, film material does not live up completely to what it could have captured um, here. Um, looking at the, the lens and the results in general, I feel that uh, to my eyes, the images are sharp into every corner. There's a lot of detail recorded and there's hardly any fall off or vignetting in my opinion. And that especially worked out fine when I took my time and um, had shots carefully taken, framed correctly and so on, and then exposed correctly and by taking the time and standing. When shooting from the hip, uh, so really in a straight shot style, I sometimes had blurry images because of the automatically selected aperture and shutter speed combination. I think you can handle that better and get used to that um, than I did, um, to be honest. So if you know that, if you are fully aware of that and have a good sensibility of the light situation that you are having and what the camera might select for the um, yeah, motif at hand, I feel that you could even um, yeah, do better here and um, take be still for a moment longer basically instead of just yeah taking the snap and, and walking on directly out of a movement so to speak that was my mistake i think so these images shot from the hip could be even better but of course i find it important to mention that, that the camera really yeah works particularly well when you take a moment and frame and so on then i get really beautiful nice results um, when we look at the bokeh of the camera, um, to me um, it's a little bit difficult to judge because um, of the automatically selected um, combinations here. I had some closer images um, where even with a 40 millimeter um, focal length I got a really nice uh, bokeh and a feel for that. Um, but it's, of course the lens really shines in all the hyperfocal situations, the typical street shots, reportage style photographs and so on. This is, in my opinion, where it really shines and where the camera just automatically selects something like an f5.6 um, or f8 and you really get nice, beautiful images. Um, of course, it produces some flaring when shot against the light, especially in my case, it didn't have um, a lens shade or anything screwed on it. Um, so if you are not terribly fond of that, um, I would recommend doing that. Um, for my taste, I really like the flares in the images where I had them, especially when shooting against the light in, in New York, um, in Manhattan, kind of uh, down a street or something like that. I, I really feel like the, the, the flare adds to the images here and get some really nice results out of this lens. <laughs> impressions. Um, to me this is a beautiful, small, light, compact but also fast and reliable camera that was ideal for such a city trip. And of course I keep telling you in every other review that a camera is well suited for traveling or for street shots and so on, but in this case hands down it really really is. It lived up to the channel, the challenge and it was a beautiful companion for this city trip. Um, to top things off, I combined it with an Oberwert, a black Oberwert casual strap, the Mosel strap, um, which basically fits completely to the black leatherette on the camera and overall gave a nice um, package. Um, and I basically forgot about the camera when it was uh, around my neck because of that strap and because of the lightness of the camera. And I didn't even bring a camera bag on most days that I was out and about in Manhattan or Brooklyn and so on um, taking shots. I only brought an extra roll of film and that's it. 
And that was a beautiful experience to um, basically forget about the camera and if you needed it, it was still there. And even when sitting down at a cafe and so on, you could just, yeah, put it down and you didn't have a lot of stuff with you. I didn't have a lot of stuff with me and that was really, really nice. So what are the pros and cons? On the pro side, I see that the camera is easy to operate and quick to shoot. Um, the lens is fantastic and reliably produces wonderful results. The film transport is incredibly silent and smooth and in a similar fashion, the leaf shutter is super silent, which gives the camera overall a very stealthy feel. Um, the combination of the black sleek design plus all the silent operation. And the camera can still be had for relatively small prices in comparison to other Rollei models, which of course I really appreciate. And the wide availability with over 200,000 units produced, all made in Singapore without all the nuances, as is common for other Rollei um, 35S um, and uh, SE models and so on. Um, I really like this about the XF35, that it's just pretty straightforward. The only small downsides that I see are of course, that there's no automatic mode, that it's only in automatic mode and no manual settings. Um, nothing to do basically in most cases. Um, if that is a problem to you, this camera is probably not for you. Um, to me, the battery thing is only a small nuisance um, because you can simply use a wine cell or have alternatives by now. And also the lack of parallax compensation is not that much of an issue because as I mentioned, in most cases, you won't use the camera for close focusing situations or not that much. And um, then you can still, yeah, kind of mentally compensate um, for, for the, the closer distance and your framing. And um, the only really thing that is worth mentioning is that the ISO settings maxes out at 400. And at least to me, this is a little bit of a problem because I sometimes like to shoot um, an ISO 800 film or rate an HP5 to 1600 in certain situations or uh, light situations and so on. And then the camera would simply not be working properly with the light meter here because you can only set it up to 400. So this is um, a little bit unfortunate. Other than that, I, I really, really like this overall beautiful package and can highly recommend taking a look at it. If you want to get an inexpensive um, travel companion camera, this is really, really nice. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and my review of the Rollite XF35. In my opinion, a beautiful travel camera, street shot camera, um, really fantastic lens that lives up to the card size, um, heritage and a license in the background. Um, I can highly recommend taking a look at this camera if you are into this kind of beautiful 1970s compact rangefinder feel. You get a lot for the money in this particular case. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye. Yeah.